enter this in the address bar. Do not copy and paste. You must input it with the keyboard. 4 dash u colon slash slash gratitude dash and dash remembrance. Wait for approximately 40 seconds. You will feel strange. Don't fight the feeling. Or you will be, or you will be jerked out of it. And you have only one chance to do this. A weblog will appear. It will contain events that will happen for the next seven years of your life. Add slash admin slash to the address bar. Try to guess the password your future self would have chosen. There is always a way. Discovering it is never out of your reach, even if it's a meaningless string of letters. Once you have access to the admin, you can delete any post you want, and that event will never happen to you. However, under no circumstances, you are, uh, you are to edit a post. Just don't. You have only one hour to do it. After that, the connection will be lost. Daddy, there's a monster in my closet. No, there isn't. I reply in my half-sleep state. We've been through this already. Now my wife is awake too. Shouldn't you at least check? It seems like ever since she got back from the hospital, all those bodies started turning up around the city. There was another one last night. It was in the paper. Yeah, I can't tell you how broken up I am over all those dead pimps and drug dealers. Somehow, I don't think whoever's taken them out is after our kid. Just humour her, please. She turns to Kayla. Did you see the monster? Kayla nods. He's really tall and has long fingers and a big mouth with sharp, shiny teeth. He hides in the closet and peeks around the door. He says he's coming for me real soon. His name is Gore Grinder. Now I'm pissed. I throw her off the covers and jump out of bed. Susan grabs my arm and leans in close. Would you please have patience with her? She hisses. My god. She just made a complete recovery from a disease that kills children her age. It's a miracle we even have her to inconvenience you in the first place. I know, I'm going already. I growl back. I storm into her room and turn on the light. Nothing. The closet creaks open slowly. I throw it open. Nothing. Oh wait, I'm doing it wrong. I turn off the light and let the moon illuminate the room. There he is. So tall he would have he would have to duck to come out of the closet. Wearing a coat that covers most of his body. It looks like it's made of a bear skin or something. His arms crossed over his chest, with his wrists bent, and his impossibly long fingers pointing downwards. Warty skin that looks tougher than leather. A mouth that looks too wide for his head, filled with steely blades for the teeth. I shove him against the wall of the closet and follow him in to make sure my wife and kid can't hear me. I already paid you with a fresh one last night, you bastard. You don't collect her unless I'm at least a week late. That was the deal. You scare my kid one more time and I'll kick the shit out of you. He grins, delighted by my righteous indignation. His mouth stretching extra wide. Even in the dark of the closet, I can see his bladed teeth glistening. He knows I can't make good on my threat, but he doesn't scare me either. He's bound by the same rules I am. I back out of the closet, and he comes after me slowly, grinning deftly. Whatever. I shut the door in his face, then I wait a few seconds and open it again. Gone. I head back to our bedroom. Okay, sweetie, the monster's gone. Susan puts a finger to her lips. Kayla is curled up against her, sleeping peacefully, as if she knows how safe she is, and that I'll do anything to keep her that way. Anything. Fine, she can stay, but just for tonight. I squeeze into bed next to them, with what little room the girls have left, uh, left me. I'm still too annoyed to sleep. Not just a gore grinder, but his master. Does he really think I'd sign a contract in my own blood on a parchment made of human skin without reading it first? How stupid does he think I am? Mm -hmm.